It is an extremely cold day today. I think it's somewhere around one or five or something like that with a wind chill like 15 below. Yesterday it was even worse. So uh, I think today will be one of those days for in the leather studio. Let's go make a holster. All right, since it is ridiculously cold outside today, we're gonna to stay inside and work on a leather project. I've got the uh, Bat Masterson rig here set up, uh, the cane, I don't think I'll need that, but I need something to carry this in. And I've got a big old chunk of leather laid out on the table here. You just want to inspect it, we'll get it pulled out of the way, start making a pattern for this. Now, Bat Masterson in the TV series is the Bat Masterson holder I'm gonna do, holster I'm gonna do, and it is, I don't know what his original one, the original Bat Masterson's holster looked like because I don't see any pictures with him holding it. I've got several pictures that I found online of Gene Berry playing Bat Masterson with his holster on and with his firearm either in his hand or in the uh, holster. And I can't find anything 100% definitive on saying what length the barrel was on his gun, but I've got a four and three quarter here which I believe is what he carried. I found several pictures with four and three quarter. I did find a couple that looked like it could be a three and a half, um, but this is the one I'm going with because that's what I found the most pictures of him actually holding in his hand. The holster is a cross draw holster, which means he was right handed but wore it on his left side. And I have not found any really great pictures of the holster, but there are a few of them that show it pretty clearly um, even though they're small, when you blow them up, it really loses resolution, so it's, it's hard to tell exactly what it looked like. But it appears that it's very plain, just the one stitch groove around the outside of it, and he wears it on his regular belt. He doesn't wear it on a separate gun belt. No bullet loops on the right-hand side, um, and the holster is worn on the left, slightly off-center, so that's the way we're going to do this one. And it's not really canted a whole lot, it's just got a slight little tilt to it. And that's it. He wears it on a regular belt, the belt that holds his pants up instead of a separate gun belt. So that's what we're going to try to do. It shouldn't take up a whole lot of leather. And I may actually do this one lined because I think uh, a character like him would have had, even though it was not really fancy, it would have been a nice holster. And if they're lined on the inside, they just look a lot nicer. So the leather I've got here is like, uh, I think, seven or eight ounce and I've got some much thinner two to three ounce that I'll use to line it. It's gonna be dyed black, just fairly plain, and um, hopefully it'll turn out to be a good looking holster. We'll give it a try. Okay, I got some of my favorite pattern paper here. Now this is the paper, when you buy leather from Weaver Leather Supply, uh, it's gonna come wrapped in this heavy paper. I you have some other heavy paper, a roll of it that I normally use, but this stuff is so much better. It's so much thicker and heavier, and I, I really like it. The only th bad thing about it is when they wrap your leather up in it, they kind of tuck it in on the ends there so you get all these wrinkles in it, but there's plenty of material left over here to make a nice uh, pattern out of. So I've got my four and three quarter inch. Um, this is a uh, Pieta uh, Gunfighter, I think it is. I can't even remember which one it is, but it's uh, nickel plated. I've got the um, stag, fake, fake stag grips on there, kind of like what um, old uh, Gene Barry would have used in the uh, series. Pretty similar to it anyways. Uh, these are like a fake ivory, um, not the ones I made. I was going to make a set like this, but once I made them, I could not bring myself to uh, carve them up and put the jig bone look in there. So uh, I got a pair of these and uh, we're gonna use these for the video part of it and for making the pattern. Not that the grips really matter. But that's the holster we're gonna go for, kind of what Gene would have worn in the series. And um, got my paper, a couple pencils and everything. Now, I'm not exactly sure how this gun uh, how this holster would have attached in the back. It does not appear to have a uh, apron or a backing on the back of it that's folded over and attached to it. There is no loop that goes over the front of it to hold it on there. So I'm thinking it's just folded over and stitched to the back of it. And that's what we're gonna do here. Since I can't see the back of it, you can't say oh, I did it wrong or I did it right, either one, because there's nothing there to see. Um, it is canted, so we are going to do that. Now the first thing we're going to do is I want to establish a center line on here. So I'm going to get a nice long straight edge here and I'm going to put it right about there. I'm going to end up trimming a bunch of this paper away. 
So take me a nice bold uh, ballpoint pen here and establish the center line on there. Next thing I'm going to want to do is line the firearm and it is unloaded. Um, just in case for those of you who want to see, yes, it is unloaded. I check these things before I uh, bring them out here. Anyways, we're going to set it right there on the center line and we're going to roll it over to one side. Try to keep it steady as you do it. And then we're going to take a pencil and kind of trace the outline of the firearm itself. Now this holster is not going to follow that center line exactly, but this will give us an idea of where we need to be with it. And I'm only going to trace one side of it. I don't need to trace the other side because it just won't come out exactly right. So I've got my line of my firearm here and we're going to come right down to the end of it. I'm going to leave enough room to put a toe plug in it. I don't know if Gene's holster had a toe plug in it, but um, he had nice gear so I'm thinking maybe he did. Now the holster does not cover the trigger guard on here so it only comes up to the bottom of it. Similar to the uh, man with no name holster here behind me, it, it leaves the trigger exposed. So we're going to bring this up. And it's not going to be real form fitting to the firearm. I want to leave enough room in there for a welt because I believe he may have had a welt in there. And we're going to give it kind of a gentle curve just right up to the trigger guard. That trigger guard is what's going to keep it from going down any farther into the holster. So now we'll bring this up and kind of like that. Now right now, it does not matter if I make this left-handed or right-handed, once I cut it out, that'll determine where it's gonna be um, because it's gonna be the same either way when you flip it over. So I gotta do a little bit of figuring here, then we'll get this thing cut out. The nice thing is, is it's kind of a small holster, so not a lot of material needed. There is gonna be a liner in it, but you know. So the way I've got this sitting right now, this will help me determine the back panel on it some. Um, this would be the side up against me because the holster, the gun's going to sit like that. It is a cross draw, so it'll be up there like that. So the backing piece is going to be over here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to typically they're tapered in a little bit. I think my line is going to be tilted that way to get it. To, yeah, it should be tilted just like that. So we're just going to we're going to do this rough. It's not tilted very much. And then there's going to be the flap that folds over there and comes back to that. Anyways, I'll get to sketching and cutting and trimming and I got plenty of paper here. So if I don't get it right on the first try, that's fine. I got many more tries I can do. All right, I've got something here that resembles a pattern. Like I said, this part is going to be up against my body. So this is going to fold over this way. And then this is going to be just a whole lot of extra I've got on here for the back strap. The angle I established there is just a guess. That's all it is. So I'm going to fold it right about there. And like I said, this, this will probably not be correct on the first try. That folds over that way and that is pretty close. And that should be, if that's the top of the belt there, that should be just about right for a left-handed cross draw, right-handed cross draw. So, and it does hang down a little bit. Uh, I think I just need to clean this up a little bit and establish a line on here just for an inch and a half wide belt. So I might not even have to attach it to the back down here, but may be able to just do it in this piece here, which might help out a little bit, who knows. We'll clean this up a little bit because I don't think, actually I don't even think it's rounded like that. It's, I don't think it's curved like that. I think it's a lot straighter. So what I may do is, let's transfer that line there. And we'll cut that little curve out of there. And I think the other side is gonna be about the same. It's gonna be pretty straight, pretty square. And I think we're gonna go ahead and cut this right across here. We're gonna to have to make it just a little bit wider because I am going to use 
two layers of leather on here. I'm going to use the thicker on the outside and the thinner for the liner on it. So it will need something to, um, it'll need a little more volume on the inside of it. So I think this is a fairly decent uh, first draft on it, I guess. Like I said, it's not a fancy hold holster whatsoever. Anyways, let's try uh, number two because I've got more paper, lots of it. Okay, let's see if this should fit just a little bit better. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit closer, which is fine if it's not perfect. Like I said, there's definitely going to be a welt in there. And this fold that I've got on the back here will not be a hard fold like that in the leather. It'll be rounded, so it'll be more of a teardrop shape like that. But to get everything right, I have to put a hard crease in it there. And I think that'll probably work pretty good for it. Like I said, it's going to be a lot different with leather because it's so much thicker. You can buy some foam, like the craft foam comes in little 8.5 by 11 sheets. You might be able to get it in bigger ones. That'll get you more accurate. It's still going to be cheaper than the leather, but it'll get you more accurate to the fit of it anyways. I think we're going to go with that, and I think on here, I'm just going to... Probably just going to sew right across here. Maybe continue the stitch line over here to hold that on there. I want it to sit canted slightly, so I may just make an inch and a half wide channel right there for the belt. I will have to make it a little bit bigger because the, with the thickness of the leather and everything, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take up more room. So I may go like a two inch wide on here. Uh, and what I would do, I'm going to go ahead and do it right now, is I'm going to go ahead and mark two inches on there. And that'll be my stitch line on there. I will leave a little bit extra on there. So there's my two inch line. Let's leave about a quarter of an inch or so. And I'm just guessing at that. And I'll trim that off of there. So that line will be my stitch line right there and it will be seen on this side of it. So, I mean, that's not ideal, I guess, but uh, I think that'll keep it from wanting to tilt on the belt, the weight of it hanging down like that. I think it'll help hold it at that little bit of an angle right there. So the next thing to do, I think, is uh, go ahead and get this thing cut out of some leather and keep the fingers crossed and hope for the best and we'll see what happens. Okay, I got my big old piece of leather up here. One of the things I noticed after I cut the pattern out, I got to looking at it and looking at the picture from the, uh, the comic book, actually, because it's a really good picture of his holster on there, at least the top part of it, is it curves down a little bit around the trigger guard a little bit. So instead of making this just a rounded top, I did actually cut it down a little bit. So I think it fits, it looks a little more like his. Uh, and one of the things you want to do is take your pattern, make sure that you've got it the right way. This is going to be the outside of it. This is going to be the outside of the holster here. So I want to make sure that I get that part looking the right way. Uh, and then when I do my liner, I need to do it the other way so that, you know, the two sides, uh, smooth side on the inside of the holster and the outside of the holster. Now, one of the other things I want to do is I want to look carefully at any marks that are on the leather there. There's little marks on here where it was clamped up to dry. There's a little bad spot right here. It could have been a, I don't know, a bug bite or something on the cow. It does not go all the way through, but I want to make sure I don't get that in there. And I want to maximize it as much as I can. You're going to have a lot of waste sometimes. So I think that section right there will do, do pretty good. And I am going to cut it out so it's a little easier for me to manage. And I think that right there will keep me from wasting too much leather. So I'll get that cut out. Get this other stuff out of the way here. All right, go get my liner piece. Okay, so I've got my liner piece out here. And the nice thing about this, you can see there's a little discoloration on this. I'm doing a black holster, so that doesn't bother me at all. That's my outside, if I'm wearing it correctly. 
and I do not want the outside here. I want it to be the inside. So I want the inside to be up and I'm going to have to position it around where I can again use the use the best of it I can the most the best parts of it I can I guess without wasting too much now this is uh, like three and a half ounce leather here so it's pretty thin and the outside part of it is seven ounce so 10 ounce, nine, 10 ounce is really a good weight for a holster. Uh, it holds its shape really well. And it's not too hard to work with either. Okay, I got all my pieces of leather cut out, sort of anyways. One of the things I like about going to Weaver Leathercraft is like this piece here, they have a scrap bin there that's got just little pieces because they manufacture things there too, um, finished leather goods. They have scrap pieces of some really thick stuff and I like to dig through there and grab some pieces so I can cut out like welts and toe plugs and stuff like that. But now that I've got my outer piece, my inner piece, my toe or my uh, welt cut out, uh, I'm going to hold off on the toe plug until I get it uh, formed up and then I can see about what it needs to be to be in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get these pieces trimmed up. Inside right hand, I did right on there. Inside and then outside right hand, cross draw Bat Masterson. So that goes on there. This goes on here. And I'm going to trim around the bad parts where there's like a number burned in here, etched in here, stamped in here, whatever. And I like to use a nice fine ballpoint pen when I'm tracing this out. <clears throat> I'm not worried about the uh, ink being on there because by the time I uh, bevel the corners and everything, it will be gone. Uh, so I'm going to get it traced out and then uh, get to putting this thing together. And that nice thick paper makes it really easy to trace. Okay, there's my liner and my outside piece there. And like I said, I went ahead and cut out a welt for it. And I cut the welt the whole length of it, <clears throat> which is something I don't always do. Um, sometimes I only cut it about three quarters of the way down and then skive it and thin it out. I'm going to leave this one full length because one of the things I want to do is to make sure this thing is going to fit, I'm going to have to, you know, get it wet and folded and all that kind of stuff. But right now, I can kind of get an idea on if it's going to fit on here. Just taking the outside piece. Yeah, it's going to fit, but it is definitely going to need the welt in it. Maybe two welts. That one might not be thick enough to uh, make up the difference on it. So I have no problem cutting another welt and putting it on there. And. That's what we're gonna go for. Now, I don't like to bevel the edges until after I've done my stitch groove and everything, so we're gonna, there's a lot of steps to do this, um, but we're gonna get it rolling and um, get it all stuck together and all that good stuff. And this is contact cement. I prefer it. It uh, is a very strong adhesive. Strong smelling too. Highly flammable also. And probably causes Dane Bramage. Alright, right now I'm only going to stitch the top and the sides right up here on the back strap and everything. I'm going to leave this unstitched because I have to fold it over and stitch it to here. And I'm not going to do the sides or the bottom yet. So I'm just going to start here at the corner. This is sort of a decorative stitch, um, but it is helping hold the two layers together.
All right, got that seam sewn up on there. And if you keep everything consistent, every time you pull that needle through, pull it through the same way, up, down, back, whatever you do, do it the same every single time, and that will keep your stitches looking good. It's when you change things, then that's when it sticks out like a sore thumb, go, oh, what happened right there? Eh, I changed up the stitching pattern. So try to keep everything the same, always feed through the same side first, always pull your thread the same direction on the back side when you stick the second needle through there and it should come out looking pretty good. All right, I gotta do this seam right here, and then I think I'm gonna dye it. I'm gonna bevel the edges, dye it, and then I'll wet it down and start bending it around to uh, get it to close up and fit right. I'm gonna dye it before I do all that, just so I keep, I can get down inside here really easily. I hope anyways. Say, I'm not a professional holster maker. Okay, I got the two parts stitched up that I wanted to get stitched up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do my beveling because then I'm gonna do the dyeing and I want this already to be exposed before I dye it because I want dye to get in there. If I dye it, then bevel it, uh, it'll expose the leather underneath there. Okay, I got me a layer of plastic down underneath here because I didn't do that before and the dye soaked through my paper and got my cutting mat stained up a little bit. So right now I've got plastic and paper down and I like to start from the inside first because if I mess that up when I flip it over and set it down, it's not that big of a deal. So let's get this shook up a little bit. I got my uh, Merkin here, the little piece of wool and I got a wool dauber here too. And we're gonna get some stain on this thing or dye on this thing. Now this is Phoebing's Pro Dye, which is a oil-based dye and an alcohol carrier. And I probably should not have gotten it on there, but it's a little late now. We're gonna dye the whole thing. Now we'll flip it over and I'm not worried about that side showing any flaws or anything. It's the inside. This is one of the reasons Chuck recommends not wearing black gloves with black dye is because you can't see when you got it on your gloves. I can see it because it's wet, but uh, it can make things problematic. All right, well, this is wet with the dye. We're gonna go ahead and get it started in the folding process, get it curled around a little bit, maybe. All right, we're gonna let it dry just like that. Okay, so the dye is all dried up on here now. Now, I had one of those things happen that I really wish didn't happen, but it did. And it's not the end of the world. Seems I made the holster just a tiny bit too small. Maybe, uh, I mean, that's got a really tall front side on it, so that's part of it right there. And just not taking the time to really see if it was gonna work. I think I could sew it and wet mold it and probably get it to work okay. But one of the things I did do when I was making this, because I suspected it could happen, was I did cut out an extra welt. So what I'm going to be doing here now is putting this extra welt in there because it's going to need it. Um, that'll get it a lot closer and make it a lot easier to fit that, to wet mold that firearm into there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put the welt in there and I'm going to go ahead and get this punched out and uh, sewn together. So when I do sew this up, it doesn't matter, I can do it either way, but um, I, I definitely gotta get the other welt put on there. So anyways, I got a little bit of uh, dye to scrape away, I think. Um, I've never tried gluing over the dye, but I am gonna rough it up. I have to do that anyways, because it is the smooth side in here. All right, we're gonna let that tack up a little bit. Now, if you've done something like this before, you made a holster and it didn't come out right, like I said, it's not the end of the world. I don't have a pattern that is proven to work. I'm making my pattern as I go, and I don't always get it right. Even some of the professional ones don't get it right at the uh, on the first try, and it's okay. Um, it's disappointing sometimes, but you know, this is a pretty large firearm. Even if it doesn't fit, it's, it's still not the end of the world because like, 
some of the Heritage Rough Riders or the Ruger Bearcat or something are going to be smaller firearms. And they would probably fit in here just perfect depending on the barrel length and everything. Or, you know what, if you got a, uh, a, a grandchild or a child and maybe they got a cap gun or something and they want a really nice holster to go along with it, it's still not the end of the world. Anyways, I'm going to uh, let this tack up, get it stuck together, then I gotta repunch my holes at least on this side so I can get the needle through there. And then I'll get it sewn up because there's not much else to do. I can't make it any bigger unless I put another welt in there and I don't wanna do that. Two welts are plenty to go in here. So we'll just see what it uh, comes out like. Okay, so the only thing I really had to do was I had to put a long stitch in the back there. All my stitches on the front are good where they're supposed to be. Uh, it's going to take a little burnishing to get some marks out of here from working that all through there. But the most important part now is, is the firearm going to fit? I'm going to tell you right now, no. <laughs> no, it is not. Well, actually, it's not too far off. Yeah, that actually does fit. So really, all I gotta do now is just get this thing wet molded, and I'm gonna get it in some really hot water and wrap the gun in some plastic, several layers of it, and get it to put in there, pushed in there, because that's definitely not the kind of uh, retention you wanna have on a, a quick draw setup, for sure. So anyways, I'm gonna go up to the kitchen sink and get this thing wet molded, get this wrapped in plastic, and get it squeezed down in there. And I think uh, I saved it, you know, kinda. Yeah, I think that'll work. Took a little bit of stretching to get it out there, but now I've got the retention that I want, which is pretty much zero. So now uh, I did not put a toe plug in it. Not going to. Uh, I did put stitch holes around there. I should probably go ahead and at least run some thread in there to fill it in. I may put a toe plug in it, who knows. But I was a little disappointed with the mistakes that I made on it, but I think it's it turned out okay. Yeah. Zero retention fits in there just about right. It could actually go down just a little bit lower because it's not actually contacting the trigger shelf there, I guess. But it fits in there pretty good. For a movie prop, video prop, whatever, works pretty good. We gotta try it out and see how the whole thing looks, so. All right, guys, there it is. Uh, got the Bat Masterson getup going on here. Got the cane and everything. And more importantly, I've got the holster done. So it is not exactly like his was done in the DV show. I can't tell exactly how his was done because all I've got is some pictures to go by on the internet and what I can see on the TV show. But it is a cross draw holster, right handed, wears it on the left side, slightly off center there. Got the stag horn grips on it. Not exactly like his, but the holster I think is pretty close. Just a slight cant to it. The center, the end of the butt comes to about the middle of his uh, midsection there. And it is a center bar buckle that he wears on his belt. And like I said, it's just the standard belt that holds his pants up. So that's my version of it. Probably not my best holster, but um, you know, I'm not a professional holster maker and it's just fun to make them. I like making the little props for the different videos I do. So I'll have to get this thing out on the range one of these days and give it a try in the whole Bat Masterson setup. Anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review. If you could reach up here and hit this button to check out some of my other videos and hit this button down here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.